Hello to the homemade video series of um, Enterprise Architects, Bugs, ProCloud Server, and so on configuration. Um, today I'm going to install um, a SQL Server in South India again, um, based on Azure. So I switch to my Azure environment. Um, there I have already um, I've downloaded before the SQL Server stuff. Uh, I have already my server that is named Sparks Server 02. And I'm going to install now a SQL database in this uh, area. Just I have to create a SQL database, then uh, I enter a database name. Um, I stay with this uh, 02 just to know where I am, because I would do in Brazil and in Western Europe, wherever. Um, I have already a resource group, so I can reuse it for, for India South. I want to have a blank database. Of course, I can prepare already a EA-based database or my default repository. Um, I decide to use um, a new server configuration. So my server name is Sparks DB server 02 and some credentials. Lucky they are the same, and of course, in South India. Um, for the configuration, I stay with the standard pricing. It's really a cheap one um, because it's not that much uh, data transaction units, um, but uh, you can also choose to have elastic pool if you have high, high um, performance recommendations and, and needs. So this is very powerful, the configuration of SQL services without having any knowledge about clustering and so on. So SQL Server in Azure it's an easy game. So this um, SQL Server is now uh, going to start. I'm sure I have, will have to configure something. We have to wait for the installation. In the meanwhile, I will give you some backgrounds about this uh, configuration of Enterprise Architect with SQL Server. So at the end, you have uh, two major files you need. Um, I have prepared these DB scripts. So the first is the schema information. This is uh, a little bit updated and optimized with indices um, in 2017, I believe, or 16. Um, and, uh, and the EA base means some initial data. So I have installed also on this machine the SQL Server Management Studio that I can easily configure a database and I have also a local database on this machine that's a SQL Express database that is good enough um, for us. Hey, Gamer PC is the name of the PC. I was thinking about what's the name. Um, in this case, I have all the credentials and we can see that there is no database defined at the moment. Um, we see just the system databases, master model, and so on. And I'm going to create a new one and say, okay, I want to have a new database. I name it. Um, EA example uh, SQL Express local that, that, is, that it can differentiate later on and uh, we can define some options but at the end the default options will fit to our needs. So I can just say create. Now I have a database and what I can do because it's now empty at the moment I can just add a new query and in this query, I just post um, the schema of that is provided by Sparks. And uh, you see that automatically um, it's connected also to the database. And I just have to execute the schema. It's very fast. And then we have um, the tables um, in the system. So maybe I have to say refresh, refresh. And then we have all the tables that are required from Enterprise Architect. So you see, oh, it was 2016 already. Uh, this is the latest version um, since version 13 of Enterprise Architect with a lot of it, opti some optimization for indices um, 
with Enterprise Architect. Uh, this schema is not backward compatible. The good story is it's forward compatible, so you can use the old structure with the new databases, but it's not backward compatible. So if you have um, this in use or updated it, then it's not backward compatible. So you sh should have at least version 13 if you want to use this schema. Additionally, because this data structure is empty, um, so it's just an empty structure without data, even the necessary information is not inside. There is a prepared uh, EA base. Um, Enterprise Architect is that intelligent that if you connect, then automatically the EA base um, will be copied into Enterprise Architect. But it's a good strategy to say, okay, the initial load of data is also done with, um, with this script. Uh, why? Because if you connect from the beginning with ProCloud Server, then if you have not filled up these things, then you are um, in some troubles uh, because he will not automatically identify what's wrong and uh, just will not work. So I will run this script. It's done already. And so we have some initial data in. So if you look as a special, especially for cardinality, I can say select the top rows, then you get this initial data filled. That's all. Um, in the meanwhile, the SQL Server in India should also be up and running. So we can go here and see there is the SQL Server already. And um, what is also very important that this SQL Server is by default not um, accessible from outside. So uh, we can, maybe I'm not sure, we will verify. Um, so the connection string is also provided for the different connectivity possibilities. So it says, okay, um, the server is available at port 1433. And um, once again, I will verify if there is any thing I have to configure for the network. So maybe not, maybe yes. Um, okay, we'll just verify if we can already connect to this database server. So we just have to verify. That's easy. Just go here. Then go back to the SQL um, edition. And I say, okay, I want to connect to a database engine database engine is there. I don't want to have Windows certification. I want to use SQL Server authentication. So I can remember the password. So, okay. Your IP address. Oh, it's nice. Hey, that's nice. Um, the interesting story is that they allow me that um, by default, it's nice. Um, it's a feature that I have not seen before of Microsoft SQL Server that I can add um, the firewall of Azure. Um, so that means, of course, I can do this uh, in the Azure environment too. So there is some uh, firewall configuration, I believe, for the SQL Server, I thought. Maybe not. Uh, where can I find it? Maybe maybe resource groups. So we will have here this India South. Maybe we have find the, uh, the firewall rules, but it's very easy um, to configure this because um, if it is supported by, by, um, by the tool, it's much easier. So maybe I have to search for the firewall rules here networking application gateway <laughs> so oh maybe i don't want to search because it's so easy that i get it here from uh from the new sql server manager and i just have to sign in with my with my azure account And he's adding my IP address that uh, this is a trusted one. 
Um, this is an easy possibility or can add the range. In this case, this is my public IP address. So I will accept it because it's just a proxy. So nice that I can access on a very easy way uh, SQL Azure Server without searching in the Azure in infrastructure where I have to go to that to can access the database. And here are the databases. So maybe I collapse, I collapse this uh, local database. Uh, we have the database. Uh, we have already a prepared database uh, because this is in the configuration of um, of Azure. So I have created already one. And uh, at the moment there are no tables in India. So I can use again the the schema script. Uh, just switch the database. So maybe I have to switch the database here. Not willing to switch for me. Okay, make a new instance. This should work. Um, so if I have already a new instance, I also should be able to switch here, but it is not working. Okay, don't care. Uh, just copy it to my query here that is related to my database in India. And I, I create, I create uh, the script now. It's of course a little bit far away um, to execute the tables. And for the base, I will also be prepared. Um, create a new session. New database. I will copy it here. So, in this case, sometimes it would be faster if you create the structure on the server. So it is also possible for the SQL, um, the SQL uh, server. There is a SQL database, and I can also. Um, connect with the database here using Visual Studio, or I have also a query editor. It's a new feature also uh, where it is on server side because this uh, infrastructure is uh, connecting to the backend. Um, I just have to log into the server. And then I have a query editor that is running on site in South India. And so it's much faster. So we maybe have already some tables there. So just, uh, okay, this is finished. And instead of creating that stuff um, from my server here, I can also place this in this environment of Azure and I can just run it. And this is much faster because it's near uh, to the server. So you see already the database structure that was created using uh, SQL Management Studio um, to access this environment. And now I'm just inserting the tables and the, the attributes and so on into my server in India. So somehow thousand something tables. That means now I can already access uh, from Enterprise Architect, either this local database. So I will start with the local one uh, as I connect to the server. I want to connect to a SQL server. The SQL server, because it's a local one, I can seek for. Um, if it is a foreign one, then a seeking is not a good idea. It's much better to insert the server name because typically oh, it's not, pro, not supporting. Um, so easy localhost. Um, I can use Windows identification, but I use typically, I have forgotten what my credentials have been. I think it's only internal. And, and then I can use the database. So maybe localhost is not correct uh, because I decided to make an instance. It's gamer PC SQL Express. I have to type in the correct uh, credentials here. Thank you for unknown error. Once again, connect to server, uh, use so SQL Server. Integrated security and 
here we have our eXample local database. We can test the connection and then we are connected to the local database. Um, here's a nice feature for a SQL connection that we have encryption um, possibilities, but in this case, I don't want to encrypt. And here we have this empty model so far. So uh, there is nothing in, uh, but it's an empty node. And here we can start with modeling. I want to move the EA example later on into this uh, environment, but uh, what I can also do, I can also connect to the server that is in India, directly to the SQL server in India. I just have to copy, no, that's not that what I wanted to copy. I uh, just have to copy the name of the server. The name of the server is, we have seen this before, overview. Okay, um, here is the name of the server. You can copy it, name of the server. In this case, I have a user. Then I can choose the database. I allow the saving of the, the password, I test the connection. And now I will encrypt because I have written a password directly into the connection string. So it is very sensible to encrypt it. And now I have to uh, connect the server in India with a direct SQL server connection. That means a lot of traffic uh, going around because just of the SQL server overhead. But at the end, I will only get one root node. Um, and this is and a lot of data that was loaded. You have seen some thousand rows loaded in behind because of the infrastructure behind. So now we are connected to the same server, SQL server in Asia. And I recommend now to have ProCloud server in the middle. So having ProCloud server in the middle means I switch to a server that is located in India near to near to my SQL server because it's the same data, almost the same data center. We don't really know. Maybe I can ask Microsoft, but uh, we don't really know. So I close up some windows from our last session and here we will configure to access um, my Indian database server, SQL server. So I have to go to Spark Systems Cloud Services client, and there I configure um, a new connection that's not password secured at the moment. We're just working with a Firebird database in the backend, but now I will add a new database manager. And it's really the same as I have done in from my local situation. I just copy the string here. I make, uh, I type in my username and user credentials. Um, it makes a lot of sense to allow saving password. Uh, I always uh, choose, already choose the, the SQL. I can connect it. And the difference is now there is no kind of encryption. So don't read the server <laughs> structure. Um, I define uh, a new uh, a new connection to, I uh, will define a new connection, an alias that I want to use. So it's the SQL Server India 02. And what I have to do now is that I will have to configure it and I have to activate and enable uh, the the database manager in the in the in the pro cloud configuration i will also be prepared to use it via web ea um, secured connection is not necessary in this case so i'm happy with that configuration and now i'm able to to access already uh, my pro cloud server um, using the elias sql server india because i'm not willing to type it a lot so it's easy to copy it um, and then I go back to my Vienna server and connect now to the project in India using the cloud server. Um, just name it as it is. I want to use a secured connection on port 443. So I'm going over the internet information server that is in front of the 
uh, ProCloud server, but what I'm doing now is just connecting through, Pro, through Internet Information Server um, to the ProCloud server. And it's slightly faster just from the emotional point of view. I make later on a performance analysis because it's only HTTP, HTTPS traffic between my Vienna server and India. And on the Indian side, we have um, the ProCloud server. It's near, it's another server, but it's near to the SQL server location. And so it's really fast, the database connection here uh, from, from India to India. I can um, show it how that it's really fast if you're on a local environment. So Enterprise Architect is also now in India. And, um, and if I connect, uh, in this case, also connect to cloud uh, with the same, I'll copy paste the error. So a SQL Server India 2. Um, I copy the alias again. Go to Enterprise Architect, connect to cloud, and I will name it the same. In this case, I'm in the local environment, um, staying with ProCloud Server. So there is no difference if it's a local server or directly connecting to database. So it's slightly faster if it's a complete local environment because everything is in India now. Um, once again, I will do some performance tests uh, to, to compare in percentage what's the difference. It makes no sense in absolute numbers because uh, it's just a subjective things. And of course, there is a lot of internet traffic and uh, depending on daytime and so on, and depending on your infrastructure, what is possible. So what you have seen uh, is that it is very easy to have a SQL Server in Azure environment and it's very easy to connect and to have it as a backend for, uh, for Enterprise Architect. We have seen that there are two scripts available, one for the schema, one for initial data load, and uh, that the performance is, of course, slightly lower if you are in a very far away foreign country. But depending on your infrastructure, um, it's very easy to have a much higher performance if you know how to deal with it. The highest possible performance for sure is if you also place Enterprise Architect there where ProCloud Server is, where SQL Server is, because then the, the network is not the problem anymore. And so I recommend if you really have a worldwide scenario to re re use remote desktop or Citrix environments um, to have the highest possible performance to collaborate on a worldwide perspective. Um, another possibility, of course, is because this is really the fastest way um, to work with enterprise architects. They have a local database and local environment very fast. Then you have alternatives like uh, Lemon Tree, a new way of collaboration that is provided by one of our partner companies. So thank you and goodbye.